getting uh, business support, you're getting a business plan, you've got a, a mentor, uh, you've got an office, which would be the, you know, the apartment and the land, and you get help on how to launch a business. And if it works out, you expand and you might want to get into farming from being, a, you know, being in the accelerator program in Prince George right. County. It could lead you to where if you pick up the skills of knowing how to manage five piece, five acres, you could take that same kind of management to 300 acres right. and get into it and have the financing available and the programs and the mentoring and the business planning to be able to support it. And you need those young people to, to relate to what Derek said, a profitable farm is a preserved farm. Um, if you don't have those people coming in, oh, and I'm not an old farmer, but an old old farmers are, are, are walking away from these farms. My father told me, he said, if you don't hold on to the farm, it's gone. Well, my father told right. me, go get a good job and get the hell off. He told me. <laughs> 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 I didn't so, listen to But well, you guys did both. That's what I'm saying. You listen, you both listen to your father. Your father saying to me. We have some of those here. We do have some new and they get a farm so that we can hear about after. Just to close a little bit, so there needs to be infrastructure to train new farmers. Yes. To preserve the future of farming. We have a woman's voice, not as powerful as you guys. Come on. And I'll, uh, I'm actually um, with the food bank, but I also want to make sure that we're also um, including the waste you know, as we were related to. So making sure that that's a part of uh, all the things that we're looking at is that we're also making sure that we're not ad we're addressing waste in it. And because we do secure a lot of it's food a good market. It could be a good market for farmers to help with um, low income families. So that um, and part of doing the waste is composting and recycling and so on. We need to have businesses. And, and we, those have to be allowable uses in the county. Sure. Also, the foods, talk about that. also, the foods that are not going to the retailers that are going to go to the seconds, yeah, the seconds that, are, yeah. that are going to go to folks that we serve in the community who are not going to get yeah. the food. See, we can still use these, these repurposed shopping centers for this purpose and giving them space in there because this is going to be a, a source of like-minded people coming there. It could be a source of locating future farmers also as far as a place where they come through, have an interest and desire, learn more about it, and we place them in the right lane. That's We've been looking at uh, all kinds of incubator farms. I just want to say that um, we have council a member council Glass. member that just came in. And, and she's um, the vice chair. Yes. <laughs> Vice Chair of the Economic Development Corporation. And it's really yeah. important. <laughs> <laughs> Vice Chair of the Council, not Economic <laughs> On the board for yeah, Economic Development board Corporation. Vice Chair of the council. <laughs> <laughs> oh, welcome. She's one of my bosses. <laughs> She's also on our um, Food Equity Council. So, so on both of your boards. Yeah. <laughs> and I'd actually like yes, to circle back briefly to your comment. I talk, so how do we do that food recovery piece? To get, it sounds like you were kind of going in the direction of getting the food that's going to be wasted in the hands of people who are in need, That's right? Uh -huh. Right. And so I think part of it is just as we're as we're looking at making sure that, that we're creating systems for economic development, that we're also making sure that the, that because of the food bank does purchase a number and we can work with local farmers to ensure that we're getting those seconds. So just making sure that we're as we're moving forward that that's a piece that's a part of whatever policy or. Our, uh, and that creates more jobs too. The Absolutely. distribution of uh, scraps yeah. that it picks up a whole nother yeah. opportunity for entrepreneurs. A practical process that we already use at EDC is this: those that will get involved in, let's call it that, that food hub, uh, those restaurants that will come, they would have a we would have a prearrangement with them as That's part right. of that process that their those items would go to the source. That's right. Just like when a large contract or a large project comes here, a certain percentage is allocated for local businesses and vendors to be involved in the construction and those kind of items. That's the easy way of, of handling that process. You know, I've got to go to okay, a, another speaking engagement. Okay. You can see my team. Well, it's Very awesome to have this is, you know, this is exciting. And Jim, I, I, I hate to put you on the spot, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on how we move this forward. I think this is. I think we need to write some of this down and put a plan together and bring it together. I certainly would be open to uh, lobbying with the county executive's office, our council, our delegation. I mean, I was just in Annapolis last week and spoke to the Senate delegation uh, from Prince George's County. It's our job to do that. And so, whatever resources, whether it's federal, state, local, or partnering with the local business community to be able to come up with a market-based solution, that's what we do. So I think we need to get all down and say, get it in writing, have our plan so that we can go out and put some timelines with some real smart objectives on what we're trying to do and go after it.
And you've got my team here to support it. I want to make this happen. I want to make this happen. I love the idea of the accelerator. I love the idea of some kind of way of making it easier for farmers to come to one destination, drop the load, and then somebody else helps to distribute them. And I don't think it has to be government. I think it can be a market-based solution because it's a market for that. And even picking up slop is a market. I mean, it, I, I know this from my own life. And uh, we picked up slop from the city was charging uh, $8 a barrel. My father said, we'll pick it up for $5 a barrel. They said, you can have it. And we got backed up with slop, and we started selling other farmers' slop. And it's, it paid for my college education. So I know that that exists, and I'd love to help set up that infrastructure. We'll leverage every bit of resource we've got that, uh, with EDC to make it happen. So you've got my team and the resources. And my my <laughs> Going on. I'm going to ask John to John, get the same grade to get us a meeting, okay? And anybody else that wants to be able to, I want Larry to come in, and I need to be educated about what yes. this, this hub's about. Educate me, and then let's get it together, okay? Very good. Put some tight timelines. Let's say, let's say, let's say, let's say like six months from now, how do we get this up and running? <laughs> you know, instead of it's going to take five years. Let's let's go crazy. I've got Tom Himmler, who's the uh, uh, Deputy uh, Chief uh, Administrative Officer here today. I can't wait to share with him what we talked about right now. Yeah. And get Tom and my best friend on board, county executive. Absolutely. I just I just learned, Jim, that it is feasible if we open this facility within three years of opening, there will be somewhere between 25 and 40 full-time jobs. So it comes down it's our right lane. Yeah, it's it's a big it deal. comes right down our lane. I love it. Okay. Okay, so we He's, want a few more. He is the more... hookup with the retail community and the wholesalers. Excellent. He's got it down. And we've got the resources to do this. That was Good. just my guess. I mean, you know. I know. If we can get there, yeah. maybe even more. Well, maybe and it's, it's right. the retail connection, you know, for us um, in the next three I'll years, there will be four wineries right. in our this little stuff. area. Mm -hmm. And so it's getting that retail connection in order to get out without each one of us individually knocking on the door. Mm -hmm. You want me to carry the other wineries? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I want to just see if there are any other, I, yeah. all this is critical, there are other burning issues that people feel, especially those voices we haven't heard, please. Yeah, this is controversial, I know, and Yates, you can be quiet. But <laughs> I, I want to remind people of the equine industry in this county. Mm -hmm. And Larry can attest to that yes, some. We were on a Committee yes, beyond we ago, it brings a huge amount of money in, including in tourism. Mm -hmm. And as you discuss, you know, like a fly or something for you to put, right? People come from all over the country to the equestrian center mm -hmm. for major horse shows. Um, you know, there's still the whole plan about the Maryland State Equestrian Center. And so, whether or not you think they're real agriculture, although they do mm -hmm. consume a lot of grain and hay, certainly from this county. I just don't want them forgotten. I mean, I just think we need to keep them in that big picture because there are people well, who love They're also preserving land. land. So yeah. Yeah. Just for the record, in state law and in county law, it is agriculture. I know. We, I know. We, we I know. passed that group on that battle behind us. Okay, we have, yeah, go ahead. Um, what happens when the medical marijuana uh, growers and dispensers come into the play this morning? Well, I mean, I think there's room for both mer mer medical and marijuana and food. We don't want one displacing the other. Um, <laughs> I think they're going to be also, them, so they may not actually be in the same zone as the agricultural. But how will that impact? Well, yeah. I think we can put that on the question. I don't think we uh, we have the answer right now. The tax dollars, but I think it, it definitely um, take the tax dollars from there, um, the, that particular business and funding them back into agriculture. I mean, I I, I know that what's happened in places like um, Denver has been really unfortunate because medical marijuana and other marijuana um, has been a cash crop. And people have had money that they can invest in a federal bank because marijuana is not legal regularly. So we can't do that kind of thing and end up having a lot of cash floating in the economy, separate cash. I think it's something that's but really I think it's something that we need to look at and put on that list and discuss. I think. Um, yeah, I just had a, a suggestion. Um, I know that uh, last year I went to a, uh, a workshop where. There was a lot of school procurement um, for trying to get food into local schools. And the biggest challenge was that I think they have like a dollar and 50 cents to work per plate on these items. And if we could just get some more funding 
to these schools to encourage um, you know consumption of local produce. Um, I know that Prince George's County, I think, uh, contracts out with Keeney for a lot of their um, for a lot of their produce to, to fund the schools. And if there could be some sort of regulation that Keeney's got to have local have local produce, you know, raised in Prince George's County, raised in Maryland, in their schools in season when it's you know feasible. Um, you know, I think that um, if we could put some funds towards that, that would help some of our issues with child nutrition and obesity and helping farmers at the same time. And I mean, there's, a, there's um, how many kids in the school system? Um, yeah, it's a huge number. And, and Brad, like, they've done that in other states. So yeah, they've, they've done in other states, and I know that um, Anne Arundel County does a good job with it, with their farm to school uh, week or month. And um, if we could just... Well, it's really pretty awesome what they're doing in D.C., and I think people should take a look at that. Yeah. Because uh, it's very locally... And I think that's just a huge market for, you know, for farms like mine. So I think that's I, a very important comment and what we should do. Uh, oh, yeah, we got it. And so, la last kind of call, any burning things that we should be considering from someone that we haven't heard in the room yet? So, fair. Anyone that you haven't heard from yet? I want to make sure you get a chance to have your voice heard. One thing I wanted to mention is uh, you mentioned the, uh, the food incubator, um, or the kitchen incubator. We're working with a young lady by the name of April Richardson right now, who uh, has a product called PC Sweet Potato Cake. Mm -hmm. She happens to be in 300 Starbucks, and she's working on a deal with, she's kind of buying a skip with um, a major chain. Um, much information, I'll tell you what it is. No, you're on video. Don't give too much information. <laughs> but she, she is uh, she's doing a great job. But she's using the, uh, the food incubator in Rhode Island Avenue in D.C. So I had an mm -hmm. opportunity to go over and see that. It's amazing. It's amazing what yeah, they've done over there with the food incubator. And a lot of the clients are using that for Prince George's County businesses. Because oh, wow. we don't have a real, I think we have a smaller version of that somewhere, but uh, to have a robust version of it food incubator where those, those companies can go and have a commercial equipment in there to... Well, and that would be a big help for locations like where we are because those are products that we can bring in to to sell in our tasting room, yes. um, where right now we can't do that because they're cottage businesses, we can't sell their products in our wow. store. So that type of, of situation would definitely help someone, you know, a small entrepreneur um, it's a very, actually get into, very profitable yeah. venture because yeah. anyone, a developer or a building owner who wants to purchase a 20,000 square foot building, you can retrofit it and these little compartments in it. It's, it's very profitable. Not only that. Yeah, and, you know, and, and, and that is part of the plan for the Ag Center. I mean, that, the Sheltonham facility is 54,000 square feet. We expect to have not only have a slaughter field and food hub, but a storefront and a commercial kitchen. And while that, the commercial kitchens aren't here right now, I will say that, and I've thrown this out there before, believe it or not, most of your volunteer fire departments in Prince George's County have commercial kitchens. Mm -hmm. Because way back when, the volunteers made money renting their halls, and the ladies' auxiliaries would, would prepare food and serve it. I know Baden has one. I know Upper Marlboro has one. I'm sure there's plenty of other commercial kitchens that, that may need some upgrading from the health department. And she, I knew she had had this book. But if you go down to Baden Firehouse, the volunteers need money. They should be able to offer that kitchen for rent for a day, two days, a couple hours, whatever it is. Those kitchens are available, maybe. Um, that's an opportunity that's here right now that can be thrown out there with cooperation with the volunteer fire department. So I'm going to let Susan respond because I know she has a lot of good info on this and then we're going to have her next conversation. There are many commercial kitchens out there, you're right, and, and even private schools and, and many other places, but the, some of, you know, you got to look at the zoning as well because whether or not, you know, someone can come in for profit and use some of these kitchens. Mm, that's, that, that's one of the problems. Uh, but if it's a government-owned facility, then their zoning sort right. of shouldn't apply. It shouldn't right. unless they're a non-profit facility. So some okay. of the volunteer so fire right. departments. Yes. Okay. So 
say. That, that's weird. But is that a legis I mean, is that a change that could be made in order to, you're not selling the product from the kitchen, you're making the product yeah. in the right. kitchen and you're I, taking it out. Well, actually, I would, I would add that it, to me it's like the same thing as renting the hall, which all of our right. volunteer fire departments have been doing, right. except they're renting the kitchen, kitchen. to an entity mm -hmm. who's preparing their food, and then they're there for three hours, and then they go elsewhere. So I don't know. It's an interesting thing to look at. I, I, there's a whole bunch of these. There's churches. We have a few government facilities like um, um, up in the Port Towns area as well. I think over in Chevrolet, we actually have uh, a few commercial kitchens that have been clustered together. It's going to become a even bigger issue, I think. We're going to launch food truck cups food tonight. Truck. Yep. Um, and so part of our requirements of operating a food truck in the county, just like almost any location, um, in, in, in the region is that, you know, you have to have a commercial preparation. So if you're not, you know, if you might not be preparing everything on that food truck if you're a baker, but you're going to have to be preparing it in a commercial kitchen if you're going to be selling it out of a food truck. So that health safety piece is going to be even more critical. Um, so if some entity could help package it together or help maybe bridge the gap until there is an urban kitchen that exists in, in Prince George's County, I, I do think there's... There's there's a there's a mecha, there, there's an importance to doing that. We get calls in our office all the time. People want to know where a commercial kitchen is, um, and so we've been ad hocly directing them. So go ahead. Yeah, I, I would like to say that the zoning rewrite is a really critical thing for this county right now, and it's taking place. And that one of the one of the problems with zoning is that it tends to be conservative. One of the things we want to do is make sure that there's enough flexibility because many of the businesses that are really strong and growing in the county and in the country right now could not have been anticipated a few years ago. And so we need to be able to be, have enough flexibility so that people can really innovate. What we really want Prince George's is not to be any other county, but to be an innovator and a creative county and a, play, a leader, and especially in the food movement. And that's really possible. It's within our grasp, and I think we need to take a look at zoning as one of the inhibitors. That's, I think that's a fantastic point to end on. So we, oh, I'm just, okay. Oh, one more thing. And then almost end on. Currently in Prince George's <laughs> County, if it's, if it's um, a for-profit business, you can't cu currently share a restaurant or go in and share with a restaurant. You just hold your own license. So I just wanted you all to know that it does exist in Prince George's County, but some of the facilities that you mentioned, you can't do. Can you say that again louder so I can I it, it sounds like we need a legislative fix, is what that sounds currently like. Currently in Prince George's County, if it's a for-profit facility, uh, another, um, it's, another uh, operator can come in and share the facility. So you, we do have that. There are some small um, incubator type facilities already in Prince George's County, but it's just not in the, the, the um, non-profit facilities. You can't do it in the non-profit facilities. Without a legislative fix. Yeah, so Matt, Sasha, and I will just talk about this one afterwards. Oh, <laughs> the benefit of having council members that you're <laughs> So there's some fantastic ideas up here. We will get them all into paper. We'll send the notes out to everyone in the room. And I, I really think our next step is figuring out what our priorities are as a group. What is what is feasible politically, financially, you know, all these considerations that, that you have to make to really move actions forward. Um, so we're, I think we're going to brainstorm behind the scenes on, on what's the best next way to do that. Ah, that's very true. So if you enjoy, if you enjoy conversations like this, if you think this might be something that you want to be more involved in, the Food Equity Council is recruiting new members. <laughs> Thank you, Margaret, for reminding me. Um, and our recruitment period closes on March 4th. Um, so please let me know if you'd be interested in applying. Um, as I mentioned, a local food production worker, uh, this was sort of their brainchild that we partnered with FBC, uh, sorry, EDC to make a, make it a reality. So these are the sort of projects that you could work on as an FBC member. Um, Can you show the members of that committee are they here? Well, yeah, well, why don't we just have our FBC members and we would raise their hands. That's all right. And Danielle is like an Sorry, honorary now. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be a member. She yeah. is. She's on our advisory committee. Um, so with that, yeah, pardon? Oh, yes. And so we'd like to stay in touch with you all. We want to make sure we get these notes out to you. So if anyone has not signed up, please uh, pass. Please grab that sign-up sheet before you leave and make sure you have your correct email address on it um, and your correct name. Because uh, we absolutely want to make sure that you stay engaged in this dialogue moving forward. 
Um, so I'd like to thank everyone for coming out today, and I'll turn it over to John to. Well, I think it's a great remarks. discussion, and uh, you know, again, thank you for coming. I think it's something we need to continue. Uh, I like to consider this a launching pad for taking this rocket to the moon, so to speak. So. Let's keep the conversation going. Um, you know, maybe some from subcommittees to come up with a proposal. Something around here, Jim can, you know, have uh, and make that compelling case to his bosses and, of course, the council and county executive that this is, a, of course, important to the county, so we can continue this. So again, thank you for coming and uh, go out and tell all of your compadres out there, ad community, that this is going on and get them excited. So thanks again and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.